Welcome to the worship of God on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for joining us here at St. Mark's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Claremont, North Carolina. We continue today with our stewardship series entitled Stewards of God's Grace. This emphasis explores our call to be faithful stewards of God's abundant grace. Martin Luther, echoing what scripture reveals, rightly characterized us as beggars who come to God empty-handed. However, the testimony of scripture Sacrament and proclamation reveal that it is God who comes to us to give and to fill our lives with more than we can imagine or deserve. Given God's abundance of grace, this series take, has taken up and will take up two important questions. How is it that we become and understand ourselves to be stewards of God's grace? What are the priorities and practices that faithful stewards of God's grace are called and empowered to take up and to enact? We begin our service now with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Renew us, forgive us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. God of love, your Son, Jesus Christ, emptied and offered himself in sacrifice to redeem what had been lost and to restore what had been broken. Forgiven, reconciled, and entrusted with the gospel, help us to be faithful stewards of sharing your love and pursuing justice for the sake of our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Exodus, the 25th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to take for me an offering from all whose hearts prompt them to give you shall receive the offering for me. This is the offering that you shall receive from them, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and fine linen, goat's hair, tanned ram's skins, fine leather, acai wood, oil for the lamps, 
spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, onyx stones and gems to be set in the ephod and for the breastplate, and have them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, This poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are on the fourth Sunday of our four-week stewardship series, Stewards of God's Grace. And over the last three weeks, we've explored how we are blessed and charged by God to be faithful stewards, how we are gifted and called to be responsible in the use of our time, our talents, and our treasures as we live our lives as disciples of Jesus, and how we are redeemed and sent to share God's love and all God has entrusted us with as we pursue mercy and justice for our neighbor. Today, we'll be looking at how we are claimed by God through the waters of baptism and called to commit ourselves to the mission of God in the world for the sake of the gospel. Time, talent, and treasures are the three key pieces of stewardship. That means stewardship includes how we use our time, how we share our talents, and how we expend the treasures we have been entrusted with by God as we serve God and our neighbor. And most of the time, we can be rather shy when it comes to talking about our treasures, which means money. We might be scared when it comes to talking about money because we really don't want people to know how much money we have, how much money we make, our credit card balance, or anything that involves our money. 
And then when it rolls around to the time of developing the church budget for the next year and for the stewardship campaign that focuses on our time, talent, and treasures, we might even begin to squirm a little bit in our seats. Yes, it can be uncomfortable talking about money while in church and even for pastors while in the pulpit. It might make some of us uncomfortable and intimidated to realize that Jesus frequently talked about money and our relationship to it, including how it influences our lives. Jesus talked a great deal more about money than he did about heaven, according to Lutheran pastor Kevin Ruffcorn. A student of the Bible might even get the impression that Jesus felt that one was more important than the other. So, why all this emphasis by Jesus on generosity and stewardship? Why all this talk about money and its influence on our lives? The gospel writer of the book of Mark did not record Jesus' reflection on the widow's offering so that it could be used for a capital fund campaign. And the Apostle Paul didn't pen his offering instructions to the Corinthian church to help congregations with the stewardship program several centuries later. Jesus spoke of the stewardship of our blessings and generosity because they are integral parts of the abundant life and discipleship of Jesus Christ's followers. When we see Jesus, we see God. Jesus was God in human flesh, and he is the clearest revelation of God that we have. As disciples of Jesus Christ and as people who have taken up Jesus' ministry as his disciples, when people see us, they should see Jesus, meaning God's love and grace. We are God's hands and feet on earth today. We are God's image on earth, as each of us was created in God's image. And when someone looks at you or at me, they are seeing God's face today. And hopefully, we are reflecting God's love, mercy, grace, and generosity Pastor Kevin Ruffcorn says, God gave. God gave everything in the person of Jesus. God did not hold anything back. Generosity has its roots in God. In his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus demonstrated to us what it means to be generous. And today in our gospel reading, we heard of the generosity of a widow which reflected the generosity of Jesus. Our gospel reading takes place at the point in Jesus' life when he has arrived in Jerusalem for the last time. While there, he has spent time in the temple preaching and teaching. He's cleansed the temple of the money changers by overturning their tables. And he has been questioned about paying taxes and about which of the commandments is the greatest. He has also denounced the scribes who themselves, along with the chief priests, are plotting his death after his actions in the temple involving the selling and the purchasing of animals for sacrificial offerings. It's said in our reading that Jesus went to sit opposite the treasury, watching the crowd of people putting money into the collection boxes. The treasury was a place for collecting money for the temple. A poor widow came along and put in two small copper coins, which today would be worth a penny Well, Jesus noticed this woman and said to the disciples, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing out of abundance to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. 
this woman gave all. She held nothing back. Though monetarily speaking, her offering was insignificant. Though symbolically, her actions spoke volumes. As far as scholars can tell, the widow was not forced to do what she did, nor give what she did. Her generous actions were inspired and motivated by her passionate love for God. In response to what God had done in her life, she gave. She gave to say thank you. Our giving is also a way to say thank you to God for all God has done for us. See, generosity in the lives of God's people has always been seen and understood as a way of saying thank you. The Israelites of the Old Testament shared the first fruits of their harvest as their offering to God at the temple. This tithe was their way of thanking God for the harvest and for sustaining them over that year. They gave to God first before they sold their crops or began storing them for later use. Some people, and even some preachers, will say that wealth is a sign of blessing from God. And we know that wealth is a sign of success according to our culture. God has blessed them in their view, and that is why they have money, possessions, and more than they ever could truly use or even need. But in our story today, we find a poor widow who Jesus said has given more than anyone else that day. Because she gave out of generosity instead of like those who gave out of abundance. She gave until she had nothing left. She gave all she had as a sign to God of her thanks and her love. She saw herself as blessed and thanked God for it. The widow had the gift of life and knew she was a beloved child of God. And through her acts, she demonstrated her relationship with God and also her trust in God. That God would continue to provide for her in the days to come, just as God had provided for her in the past. Her response was one of generosity. You might even say that this widow put her money where her mouth was. Yes, it's easy to say, I believe in Jesus. But in our actions, do we reflect what we say? Then, if we're not living our lives as Jesus taught, or as the widow demonstrated, if we keep our blessings to ourselves, we are more assured in our own eyes that we'll have everything we think we will need for the future. But if we are generous in the stewardship of treasures, then we are demonstrating our faith and trust in God and that God will provide all we need. We are acting in generosity as the widow did that day at the temple. In our reading from 2 Corinthians today, the Apostle Paul lays out the principles of generosity. He uses the examples of a farmer who is sowing a seed. Paul says, the one who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Yes, if you only put out a small amount of seed, you will only grow a few crops. But if you are generous in your sowing of a lot of seeds, though some seeds may not produce you will get a larger crop because you use more seed. Paul continues by saying, God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. 
The blessings that God gives us may not be seen by our culture as having great value. But as disciples of Jesus, we know that the blessings that God gives us, such as our family, including our church family, our children, eternal life, forgiveness of sins, salvation, and our relationship with God have more worth and meaning that will remain with us and give back to us far more than any material object ever possibly could. Today is our Commitment Sunday here at St. Mark's Lutheran Church. And if you are a member of our congregation, you would have received a pamphlet in your newsletter. We ask that you take time to fill this out, indicating your time and your treasure and your talents for this year. And then we ask you to return this pamphlet as soon as possible to our church office. God has blessed each of us with the family of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. And God has blessed each of us through the life, death, and resurrection of God's own Son, Jesus Christ, who gave all for the sake of you and for me. We have been claimed and named through the waters of baptism by God. We are children of God. We are forgiven. We are loved and we are blessed because of God's grace and mercy. So now may we answer the call to be stewards of God's grace as we are claimed by God as members of God's community of faith. And may we be committed to the life, ministry, and mission of the church here and throughout the world for the sake of the gospel. May we act in generosity and in thanksgiving. May we, too, place our trust in God like the widow did. For God is the one who claims and names each of us every day and in every way. Thanks. Be to God. Amen. Let us confess in whom we know, love, and trust using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted, faithful stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, May your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each 
by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you have raised Jesus from the dead, so raise us up with those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God the Creator, Jesus Christ the Redeemer, Holy Spirit the Advocate, comfort and bless you in eternal love, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.